Okay, uh, here we are. It's practice question one for absolute values. And as always with all these math problems, I'm going to focus on exactly what they're asking me for by the end of this uh, stupid question. Uh, here they ask me for H. So what I'm going to do first is plug in for G. Uh, G is negative 6, so it's like that. And uh, I'm going to continue simplifying inside this absolute value sign here. So negative 6 minus 4 gives us negative 10. And uh, now I can go ahead and remove the absolute value sign. As long as I remember that once I remove them, everything that was negative inside becomes positive. So negative 10 becomes 10. And negative h becomes just h. Now. For the love of God, do not stop here. Uh, don't fall for it. Instead, realize that they don't ask you for the value of negative h. Instead, they ask you for h. So what we have to do is go ahead and switch the signs. So negative h becomes h, which means 10 becomes negative 10. And we've got what we want. The correct answer is choice A. So now let's go ahead and take a look at practice question two. We let's go ahead and uh, take a look at practice question two. Um, now, when I see this kind of question, of course you could um, go ahead and just kind of plug in all the numbers and see what happens. Uh, the problem is that the SAT cave people actually want you to do that because it wastes your time. And the more time that you waste on a question like this, the less time that you'll have for other probably harder questions. So instead I'm gonna kind of take a look and try and focus. I see something very very suspicious up here. I see that there's a number squared here and somehow it's equal to the same number when it's cubed. Um, I know then because it has to be an integer, they tell me here, that there are only a couple integers where the squared and the cube are the same. Um, one is zero, but if I, I don't see zero in my answer choices. Um, the other is one, so I'm gonna kind of knock out A, D, and E, and I'm gonna focus on choices B and C. And this way, then I can kind of start to play around with and see what happens when I plug in the number. So on this side, I'm gonna plug in one. And here's one, and let's see what happens. Uh, 1 squared is 1, 1 cubed is also 1, uh, but when I remove the absolute value sign here, we see that we get negative 1 equals 1. Uh, that ain't right, so we could stop, and but we don't want to assume anything, so we're just going to double check and see what happens when we plug in negative 1. Um, negative 1 here squared equals negative 1 cubed. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same process of simplification inside the absolute value sign. Negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. And my final step here, remove the absolute value signs, and we have a winner. The choice is, correct choice is B. Sweet. Uh, let's go ahead and move on and take a look at the practice question 3. Okay, guys, uh, we're looking at a mouthful here for a math problem. So we're going to try and break it down. Uh, we're always going to start at the end. What are they asking me for? And I can see that by the end, I need to find a value for Q and a value for P. So I'm going to try and figure out something that's going to help me. Now, the first thing that I see is that they're consecutive, negative, even integers. I just need to translate that English into math. So if they're consecutive, I can say that it's x and x plus 2. Now, the trick then is to figure out which one I want to use is which one would be x and which one would be, sorry, which one would be q and which one would be p. Um, since they tell me right here that q is l less than p, I know that Q is smaller, so Q would be like my X. So I'm going to replace it so I don't confuse myself later. So Q, everywhere I see X, I'm going to plug in Q. So 
I've got Q and Q plus 2. And they tell me that it's this, their sum eventually is negative 120. So I can translate what I have so far into an equation. So Q plus Q plus 2 equals negative 120. And then I can go ahead and solve for Q. And I will get 2Q is equal to negative 122. So Q equals negative 61. If Q is negative 61, my last step is I have to kind of go back and figure out what P is. Now we saw before that P is Q plus 2. So P equals Q plus 2, which equals negative 61 plus 2, which finally gets us down to negative 59. So let's rewrite. So Q is negative 61, and P is equal, we just found out, to negative 59. So now I finally have my values for Q and for P, and I can go ahead and solve for what the reason I started this stupid question in the first place, which is Q minus P. So Q gives me negative 61 minus P, and I negative 59. Now I just have to be careful with this step so that I remember that this act minus a negative changes to a positive. Oops, there we go. And I'm going to go ahead and keep continue to solve it. So negative 61 plus 59 gives you negative 2. And our last step, when I remove the absolute value signs, remember that it turns my negative 2 into a positive 2. So there we go. I'll uh, see you on the next lesson.